clash of styles in many ways from those two. And then France against New Zealand. France putting England out at the quarter-final stage. And the defending champions will be stepping out against the French in the second cup semi-final. I'm Simon Ward alongside me, former Blackburn Melody Robinson. Melody, as you look at the contrast in these two teams, it's very difficult to work out who the favourites are, although Australia have put, gone into this tournament like a train. Oh, Australia has been absolutely outstanding. I mean, this is business time for both of these teams. They've got similar athletes and, you know, they do do a lot the same. They use the space, but what Australia has is speed to burn. They've got weapons and cherry and green. And as for Canada, well, they've got the experience and they've got superwoman out there, Jennifer Kish. Well, that's that pretty much tells you how tight this is going to be. Australia just heading it up over seven. But really, anything could happen in this cup semi-final. There's the lineups. Australia with pretty much their strongest starting seven. The likes of Parry and Williams, of course, familiar figures on the women's circuit. But uh, Charlotte Kaslick making more and more of a name for herself. And really, it's Kaslick and maybe Emily Cherry that are really set their stall out early in, in this weekend. Kaslick's a ball player, she's a creator. Canada have the full complement of their team. Australia are actually missing Chloe Dalton. Will that have an effect on them in this match? Wait and see. So there's the fourth cup semi-final that these two have contested in the last ten months. Amsterdam, Guangzhou and Atlanta. Canada won one of those. Who is going to have the mental fortitude to stand up to the rigours and the stresses of this knockout stage of the tournament? It really is going to put both teams to the test. Well, it's Australia who are actually the defending champions at Dubai. They got second in the overall series last year. The last 12 months have done a lot of development. This is a team that came from behind, 22 points behind in the final last year to win. They had so much talent. But Canada, their defence, it's been outstanding. They've got so many play, uh, players out there with really good sevens brains. Yes, Canada. Seven straight tournaments with a top four finish tells its own tale about consistency. Australia, though, with class and quality all the way through their team as Shani Williams gets this game underway. Yep, that's the Dalton factor there. Chloe Dalton usually doing the kickoffs for Australia. Obviously, though, Australia right in the territory there for Canada, so there'll be a bit of pressure on Canada. First opportunity then for Australia to mount a, an attack courtesy of an unforced error in many ways from the Canadians. And that, of course, has got to be minimalised through the course of this match if they're going to have a chance to really push the Australians to the test. Their defence has been found wanting on that occasion. And it's that lady, Alicia Quirk, with her fourth try of the weekend that opens the try account for this cup semi-final. Oh, yes, Quirk. She's been involved this whole tournament. Second day, beautiful pass there from Catholic, wasn't it? She had onto it perfectly with pace. She did a bit of a dummy there. That meant that the defensive player, number eight, Varela, was in two minds. It was too late to come back and stop the momentum, so Quirk over for first try. So Alicia Quirk may not get all the headlines when the Sevens tournaments are in town, but she is such an important part of the way that Australia play this game now under, under Tim Walsh. So, a restart from Sharni Williams and Canada making sure they don't make a mess of this retake. There's Jen Kish. When we talk about the importance of Alicia Quirk, Jen Kish has a similar vitality to this Canadian side as Mandy Marchak two forwards combining there as Kelly Russell takes the pass inside Kish throwing it over the top of Kaleski and really not putting helping her team out and in the end she's Lane Landry has to go down and touch back now is it going to be a 22 restart or a scrum put in I think it was a slight knock forward yes indeed from an Aussie hand so Canada can breathe a sigh of relief there well Landry's been good for Canada too great finisher in your pace 
You mentioned that final of a year ago, and I'm sure psycho uh, psychologically that is going to be a huge fillet because you didn't mention that they happened to beat the champions in that final New Zealand. <laughs> and, right. and what what a match that was. Anybody that was here will not forget that one quickly. Struggle through the tackle. Just get the feeling Canada trying to force the pace a little bit and another unforced error this time from the skipper. Well, they're nervy because they're behind their 22, very near the Australian try line. It puts pressure on you. Just trying to keep it close there into the contact area of Canada, but it just didn't come off of them. Marchak, such an experienced performer. Five World Cups on the CV, three in the 15s game and two in the shortened format. Oh, beautiful step and great handling skills. And it's Emma Tonangato who gets the second try on the board for the Wallaroos. Oh, that was lovely, wasn't it, from the scrum? It involved quirk, it involved cherry, and then Tonangato at the end. And the key to this try is that the Australian backline were very deep. Gave them a lot of room to move here. Canadian defence had to work really hard to shut down the space. And what brilliant skills there from Tommy Gato to pull that pass in. We talk a lot in the women's game about the crossover sports and the impact that they're having on the sevens rugby. Well, touch rugby has had more impact, I suspect, than any other sport. Well, everybody plays touch rugby in Australia, let's be honest, and, and the try scorer there, Tommy Gatel, she's what they call a Jillaroo, which is a rugby league <laughs> representative for Australia. She's been to a league World Cup, so she knows the oval <laughs> ball, that's no doubt about that. She also knows success, having picked up the gold medal in the Women's Youth Olympic in Sydney at the beginning of the year and they're going to see success in Dubai again they've certainly made a good start to this cup semi-final and there's only been one team in the first half really that pressure on the ball carrier from Molesky paying off Canada need to take care of the scrum they need to make sure they get the ball back stick to their patterns don't lose faith in what's worked for them so far in this tournament and in previous seasons a lot of familiarity between these two teams they played in a demonstration match in the Gold Coast seven demonstration matches I should say three games that they played and they, indeed they trained together as well played against each other in the Gold Coast sevens shortly afterwards which Australia won to focus and settle into their attacking game plan. And they come round on the wrap, but Stacey unable to find Landry with a clean pass. And it allows the tackle to come in. Marchak having to use her football skills to control the ball. Great pulling from Jen Kish. Rosie defence at the moment, keeping Canada inside their own half. Forcing the pass, and in the end, Marchak unable to take that awkward feed from a skipper. Yeah, it's all just looking a little too hard for the Canadians at this point. The passes aren't really flowing. It's a bit of panic set in there. But really, I think Stacey earlier, she should have passed that ball. Get it out to Landry, who's been their strike weapon wide. Get it to her early. feeds out to Quirk and Quirk goes around the periphery to find the open door but it's not there and in the end she feeds Tonangato where's the support there it is, it's come from Charlotte Kaslik Australia manoeuvring position to get into the opposition 22 and they've opened up the defence and this time it is that lady Emily Cherry who's going to get another try in this sevens format, the top try scorer, the top point scorer in the Women's Sevens World Series gets another score on the board. Well look at that, holding the ball up, looking to see where your teammates are and this all came down to support play. Australia had the numbers on attack, short passing offloads and Cherry on the end of it.
Well, the conversion doesn't go over, but the Aussies will look at that scoreline and take great satisfaction from that first seven minutes. Plenty for John Tate to talk about in the half-time huddle. Plenty to think about as we look towards the second half with a 17-0 Australia advantage. Tim Walsh there just warning his team that he's expecting the Canadians to charge out of the blocks in their second half because they really weren't able to get their game into operative mode through that first seven, no question about that. Well, they haven't been able to get into the game because the Australian defence has been so good, they're pressing up, they're cutting off any of the offloads or the wide passes. Australia winning this game through defence nearly. Start on the way, doesn't go 10, but Quirk happy to take ownership of the ball, just losing it though in the contact, and it's going to allow Canada to set themselves up with Kish. Now on as they try and work it onto that far flank with Bianca Ferella, scored a try against England to finish off day one yesterday. Harvey actually hasn't got a try through the course of this tournament yet. And when you realise she's renowned for her try scoring ability, certainly in that Women's World Cup in Paris. That's a surprising stat. Maybe she's going to change it now. Harvey steps back inside. Great covering tackle coming in from Sharni Williams. Important tackle, but hasn't stemmed the flow from Canada. And they drive for the line and they do get the first score of this second half. Well, an important time to score, and psychologically, could that change the match balance? We'll put that down to Harvey. She's their ace card that they've unraveled from the bench. This is the end of it here. See that Australian defence coming in to try and shut it down. She had enough power to go over the line. So it's a good start for the second half for Canada. Karen Packer and them making a difference from the bench. Oh, second try of the day, in fact, having uh, been part of that try-scoring count against the USA in the quarter-final this morning. Now she's made a difference in the cup semi-final. And it's certainly thrown the mix open a bit more for the final five minutes. Australia just looking to keep the ball in hand now deny Canada the opportunity to build on that early score. Shani Williams escapes, she's got support both sides, she opts for Emily Cherry. Can Magalie Harvey catch up with Emily Cherry, 11 and 11. A great roar from the stands as the tackle is made, but Australia still on the attack. The alarm bells ringing for the Canadians and that's why it's moved out for Emma Tonangato to get her second score. Wow, that's all I can say there. Australia, they had numbers to the left-hand side, to the right-hand side. It was their prop and Captain Williams doing the props job. Basics gave that inside ball. And then this is the end of the try once again, Tongi Gato. I loved Harvey's chase. But Australia are just making sure that they've got players on either side of the field. It's stretching that defensive Canada and then they're having to scramble. 
Australia with the most potent attack in this tournament. You look at the stats yesterday, 99 points scored over three games. 24 tries this weekend before this match, so averaging six tries a game. And they have such composure in attacking possession, in attacking position, to be able to capitalise. Well, everybody's doing their job in this Australian team. The two props do the roles they're expected, which is about go forward, making the tackles, putting pressure on the breakdowns. And then they've got all those threats everywhere else. Efficiency and execution from the Australians so far in this Dubai Women's Sevens World Series. And Canada, as composed and confident as they've been thus far, have got to find something special in these last three minutes if they're going to compete for that place in the final. <laughs> Everybody's saying, I haven't got the ball. Now, that's an unusual position in a rugby match. You see there, the Canadian attack was lateral, which means that they're crabbing across the field. It meant that by the time Magdalene Harvey got it in the wing, she had no space to attack. She stretches but can't control the ball, and it's back in Aust Australian clutches as they move it wide to Tonangato. Stepping inside, putting on the afterburners, but once again, Magali Harvey getting a tackle in. Important tackling it is on those wide exchanges. Beautiful line from Shani Williams, releasing the ball inside. And it is Amy Turner who goes over. Well, such a well-manipulated try there, and the execution supreme. Wonderful sevens to watch, wasn't it? They played the five-metre line at the far edge of the field. Now, usually you'd expect them to come wide back the other side, but instead Williams was in the middle of the field to punch it up and turn up, supporting her on the inside. You know, they've got everything out there, Australia. And the confidence is ripe. Australia won nine of their last ten games before this match, and you can see... Well, we talk about a well-oiled machine. It, it is so efficient. They are able to work in any given situation. They know what their team has to do. They know what their roles are. And they operate so efficiently. Well, right now, they've moved themselves out of touch, you would think, of this Canadian side with just over a minute left. It's going to be Canada trying to get something plausible from the final 60 seconds of this game and really haven't been able to show what they're about to full value but that's credit to the Wallaroos because they really have clamped down on opposition ball and executed very very well on their own ball yes and when you're 29 seven points down like Canada is it's when everybody tries to individually make a break bit of panic out there and so they've definitely gone away from the patterns that we've seen through this tournament which is a real shame because we know how classy they are and how much how many threats they have out wide Alicia Allery tries to spark something Harvey tries to get her winger away but that pass wasn't going to hit the hands of uh, Dubasset Boris in Australia keen to finish the game with ball in hand Won this tournament, of course, last year. Won in Sao Paulo as well. Runners up in China. Cup semi-finalist in Atlanta. That's the consistency that Tim Walsh has been able to get. And they've got another cup final to look forward to now. A pretty convincing and impressive performance from the Australians. 29-7 means that they are going to take their place in the final of the Dubai Women's Sevens World Series 2014.
here are the points available for the first event of the Women's Sevens World Series. The Cup winner will collect 20. The runner-up 18, 16, 14, all the way down to even. Right down there at the bottom, he still will collect points from this particular leg. Of course, this is the first event of six for the women of 2014-2015. It all starts here in the sand and sunshine of Dubai here, first week of December. And then we'll travel across to Sao Paulo in Brazil, who will host the second leg in February of 2015. From there, it is across to Atlanta, the USA. And a week later, that is round three. And don't forget, the top four teams qualify for the 2016 Rio de Janeiro Summer Olympic Games. And so from Atlanta, we then go to Langford, the first time in Canada on the 18th and 19th of April. Round four leads us into the fifth round of the competition for the Women's Seven Series. And we find ourselves out there in London, England. And it all wraps up a week later in Amsterdam. Match number 28 ahead of us, the second cup semi-final of the Women's World Series in its third version, joined by former English captain Sue Day. And Sue, we saw how comprehensive and how clinical Australia were. What are your expectations of this match? Well, Australia and New Zealand have been the top two teams for a while now, certainly the whole of the last series. So New Zealand will be looking to match that kind of clinical display. They perhaps haven't been quite at their clinical best this series, and France have been the surprise package so far. So you'd have to put your money on New Zealand, but who knows? Well, we're hoping that a lot of New Zealanders are hoping that that is the case, though, because uh, they have won their matches earlier. Three wins yesterday against China, the USA and Russia. And then in a close match against Russia again today, that could have gone to extra time. They won that match 19-17. The French, two wins yesterday and a loss to Australia. But they were triumphant against England today, winning that match by seven points to five. Here we are, France against New Zealand. The Cup semi-final of the Women's Sevens World Series here in Dubai 2014-15. And here are your starting lineups before that. And we'll have a look at these two teams have met only on one occasion when New Zealand trounced the French by 42 points to seven. New Zealand coach Sean Horan has gone with his best side, the brought back Sarah Goss, who broke her finger yesterday, but will start four tries here in Dubai for Portia Woodman, who is the top try scorer of 47, and in the halves is Nathan Wong and Kelly Brazier. And same for David Corte, France coach. That's his number one gun team. Mayan and Hort have been absolutely inspirational in the pack. Biscarro and Le Duff at the heart of everything France do, and Isar finishing off around the outside. French team in the white shirts, red, white, blue, and red, and New Zealand all in black, the new black strip. New Zealand haven't really hit their straps in this tournament, and uh, a lot of the other teams have had build-ups, they've also had the chance, but there's plenty of French support here in the crowd. <laughs> Yeah, there'll be no shortage of people shouting for the French by the looks of things. It comes to something when we're talking about New Zealand not having hit their straps. They, they've won every single game so far. We hold them to such high standards, this team. That's Alhambra Nieva, Spanish referee. She's grown in stature over the course of last series and the series before. It's a really, really good referee, very experienced refereeing in Europe, so great big game for her to be part of. New Zealand to start with yep. Taylor Nathan Wong and that stance that we've seen on so many occasions. Sarah Goss, the New Zealand captain, way out on the touchline. We're underway. Who will play Australia in the cup final? The 2014-15 tap back there by Weber. It's gone forward first, and so... Sarah Goss, the close-up of her in a moment. Sarah Goss was not happy with that decision. They really missed her, Sarah Goss, in the last game. New Zealand competing at those kickoffs. Always put so much pressure on the receiving team, as she did there, but the referee had judged a slight knock-on. 21-year-old out of Manawatu in her 10th event. France first possession 
just holding the ball up and you can see the New Zealand line up very very quickly ease up into contact quickly released players out here on the right hand side the New Zealand is certainly there to cover it into contact goes that led off and now wide Piscarat Piscarat again with a nice lovely wide pass where there is a lot of space and here comes London Usu. London Usu stepping on the inside one to beat if she can break the tackle now she's going to use her pace here she goes France first opportunity to score and they have cashed in that was excellent team play by France all the way from the scrummage on the 22 they threw in Shazen, Shannon Izar on a, on a short ball then stretched the New Zealand defence all the way over this side of the pitch moved it back all the, other, all the way to the other side and then Caroline Ladan who's had a huge amount to do but goodness me how well does she do it she's a back three player in 15 she has gas to burn look at that finish it's just what you need when you're taking on the current world champions France continuing with that momentum that they showed earlier today. Lovely little touch there between French try scorer and the New Zealand captain. Conversion is unsuccessful. France lead 5 0. Now that's quite a way to start one of the biggest games ever that France has played. And I mean ever. Le Duff with the restart, obviously. The big crowd here as well. It's going to have an impact with warm weather. How do New Zealand respond? Crazy it. Big tackle there coming in from Mayons, the firefighter for the St. Orens club. Woodman out wide, Woodman steps, she can break away, she's dangerous. Portia Woodman gets rid of the second would-be tackle, and now it's a foot race. Good night, nurse. Woodman responds. She's got pace, she's got power, and that's why she is the top try scorer in the competition. Such a powerful athlete, isn't she? She had no right to score that try from inside the 22. There were defenders chasing up on her. She was outnumbered, but score the try she does, fending off the tackles, and it is a long run in there. This to take the lead. Conversion successful from Nathan Wong. Here is her fifth try in Dubai, her 48th to her career and you've got to get her early suit because once she winds up you're not going to catch her yeah the error was Caroline Ladanus's error she rushed up and that's all very well but if you rush up you need to come out to win push Portia Woodman in to where the other defense is coming from she didn't she rushed up flat-footed Portia Woodman took the outside and as you say that's it there's no way they're catching Portia Woodman from there epic match here between New Zealand and France, there's that lovely high kick that gives you time to get underneath, but Mayons says, get out of my way. Takes the ball and it was knocked down. Big hits coming in from New Zealand, but they're not that effective because the French are able to resist them and go forward. Quick release there from Biscarat out to Lidouf, and now on the outside is Izar. The push, the fend, and then the see you later. Here comes Izar. They're coming at her again. Izar It's just too good. Punch and counter punch, two heavyweights in the ring, and France respond in the best possible way. What a game of sevens this is so far. There is so much pace out on that pitch. Shannon Izar, another speedy player. She fended off the tackles and then just pinned her ears back and went over the line. Here she goes, takes the outside, cuts in, fends off the tackle of Portia Woodman. Portia Woodman's not happy about that, but can't catch it just goes for the tap tackle but it's too little too late Tyler Nathan Wong looks like she's injured herself, injured herself there just perhaps collecting a boot or actually winding herself in the action and she's still down as well the New Zealand halfback she won't uh, play any further part in this match that's a huge loss for New Zealand they trail on the scoreboard and have lost one of their playmakers. It really is a big loss, not only a playmaker, but her kickoffs uh, put so much pressure on the opposition. The door goes deep for France. Tane is on and here's Broughton. A lovely little step and then gets it out to Woodman. Woodman taking in the tackle. I think it's Morrow that's come on in jersey number nine. And so Morrow replaces Nathan Wong, New Zealand in possession. Late cut here from Hohepa, Weber runs wide, Goss is there and they've recycled Brazier, has players out to the left, 
brought in more Woodman again, but on this occasion you can see the French defence just drifting across. Nobody asking questions of the defence. Broughton tries to dart down the blind, which closes quickly. Brazier has it. Confronted very, very quickly from Ledouf. And they're trying to hold her up, but she fights brilliantly to get some metres and to place the ball on the ground. Weber to Broughton. Goss. Hohepa. Carla Hohepa. You know how quickly and you know how dangerous she is. 23 tries. In fact, 26 tries in her career. So a patient build-up from New Zealand. Just prepared to hold onto the ball. That's been lost forward by the French player. Deliberately. We enter the last 30 seconds. They need to strike New Zealand to close that gap. All important. Someone runs straight. Morrow. Morrow running straight. Now the offload. That looks like an early tackle. Morrow has released it. And France get the penalty. It was very, very tight, wasn't it, that tackle? Like, it was either the split second before she caught it or the split second after. Either way, what matters is what Alambra Nieves, the referee, thinks. She says, tackle OK. France competed really well at the breakdown and cleared. In no hurry to get to the set piece, uh, France, because they know that they lead by three as the clock counts down. Still have time for the line out. New Zealand, a lot of ball movement and just moving it from one side to the other, but no real penetration. Yeah, and that's the sort of penetration that you see from somebody like Kayla McAllister, who's, who's missing from this tournament. The whole point about that side-to-side -side movement is it stretches defence and leaves gaps for those people to run through. Hasn't gone straight. It's been lost forward by New Zealand, and so France will have the final say of the first half. The dummy and then the acceleration from Le Duff. Looks out of the first, second and third tackle. That's been lost forward, and so... We'll head to the break. Two tries to one has France leading New Zealand here in the second semi final. In Dubai 2014 15, France 10, New Zealand 7. Chop them and get a light lead, okay? They play unstructured stuff. Awesome at the line out time. She is allowing them to be in, so we've got to hold our fight time on their feet. That will win us the game. Ligne, là, on sent qu'on peut la coffrer. Tant pis, on monte ensemble, on reste en ligne, okay? On continue à batailler la plaqueuse. Les assistants de plaqueuse, vous faites l'effort, vous ne tournez pas. Vous ne tournez pas. Et on joue rug pour rug, on joue rug pour rug. Et après, juste continuer comme ça, contrôler en défense qu'il faut, et réavancer, recharger, avancer en zone de cadrage. Not too bad, he's telling them to, to, to not go to ground, to stay on their feet, to get up quickly, to recycle themselves. They need seven people on their feet at all times to beat New Zealand, that's what he's saying. We heard the instructions from the New Zealand coach Sean Horan. He just wants them to be a little bit more patient and to get up on defence. He said that they're an unstructured side, which is well, that's what we expect from the French. Yes. Two tries to one. Big question, have they got the petrol? Have they got the heart to go on with it? Goss goes high. Myons is there to meet her. And so no Nathan Wong for New Zealand. Taken off uh, early in the, uh, in the first half with what looked like to be either winded or somewhere around the ribs, but... New Zealand now trying to get the power game going through the middle. Goss has it and looks for some space out wide. He's Broughton. Broughton steps on the inside then accelerates. The player on the outside. That ball needed to go a little earlier. Morrow has it. Now it's released. Here goes Woodman. Woodman scored the first. Can she score the second? Here goes Portia Woodman. Inside the 22. That ball's gone forward. New Zealand go on with it through Brazier. Wide to Hohepa. Hohepa one to beat on the outside. Carla Hohepa's in. New Zealand strike first in the second half. 
you got a feel for France getting a yellow card there. It's one of those tackles you're just trying to get hold of something. There wasn't a huge amount of intention in it, I don't think. But now, six against seven against the world champions, France. It's going to be a tough, tough two minutes. And the last thing they wanted for New Zealand was for New Zealand to score in the first few seconds of that period. Carla Horhepa from Waikato, one of the more experienced players in this New Zealand side, 29 years young. Fourth try here in Dubai, 27th of her career in a crucial moment. Conversion is not great and we know how important conversions are in these semi-final matches. Yeah, that definitely was not one of Kelly Brazier's best conversion attempts. It was always going to be a tough one, so she tried to give it everything, but goodness me, didn't quite go where she intended. Nevertheless, New Zealand ahead because they got one of the one of the two pointers earlier. So important now with 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 La Danusse off the pitch that France keep hold of the ball. Possession is everything. France have made 14 tackles to New Zealand six. Brazier gives them possession here. I'm not trying to run on Miles. She's been terrific throughout the weekend. Made her debut here a couple of years ago in the French on attack. Remember the down to just six players. Here's Woodman. Shut the gate. They won't catch her. Mistakes from France are costly. And there's their second in the game. New Zealand's third. Yeah, that was just trying to be too clever. There was no need there for the little clever pass out of the back. Putting yourselves under way too much pressure. They just needed to, to hold on to the ball. They actually had an overlap there. They just need to move it into the wide open spaces. Keep it simple. It's that pass out of the back there from Izar. No need for that at all. If in doubt, just take it forward. Look after the ball as it is. They've given the ball to the fastest player probably on the pitch, Portia Woodman, and she said thank you very much indeed. She's closing in on the all-time point scorer in the cherry, and uh, that's a better conversion from Brazier, who's taken on the responsibilities of the kickoffs. Yeah, and a very, very important conversion for Brazier. We talk about how important those two points are. That takes New Zealand two scores ahead of France. Really tough for France to come back now. Psychologically, you wonder, was that... You'll be wondering as a player, was that my chance? Have I just let it go? Silly little mistakes. Good point that you've made. France will have to score twice. Plenty of time still left in this game. And we've seen them come back before the French into contact. Quick was brought in. Up on the tackle, Mayons has it and straight through and onto the ball again as New Zealand Ruby Tui has come on the field. The intercept here, wow, I thought it was going to be first try for Tony. New Zealand have been pushing the offside line, haven't they? Really trying to get up in France's face. That time just a little bit too close. And they're back to seven as well, so full compliment back on for the French. Three minutes remain, Goss holds on and pulls down Biscarat. He just rolls a couple of extra metres and now some holes starting to appear in this New Zealand defence. And he pass on the inside, the counter ruck coming in from New Zealand and another penalty holding on. Kelly Blazier says let's get on with it, taps and goes. It was Scanlon that came on and made a difference. Now two on one, Broughton, ball released out to the captain and Captain Fantastic makes it four. And that is all about New Zealand's defence and breakdown skills. They have upped the tempo of their defence in this half, really getting up in the faces of France, saying, France, we are not going to let you play. No no getting the ball out into those wide open spaces. Forced the turnover and got the ball wide. The interesting thing for me is that, 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 that defence from New Zealand, they've really put the pressure on and asked questions of the French, and that's a lovely offload there. Broughton just had to draw in the last play-up. And how valuable has Sarah Goss been in this match? Always in the right place at the right time, Sarah Goss, isn't she? She, she's, she, she, she reads the game so well, so hanging around in the right spaces. It feels like New Zealand, when the opposition are stuck in their defensive 22, they really turn it up, really put the pressure on even more, because you're jittery as an, as an attacking team when you've got possession, but you're in your defensive 22, and they're really playing on that very, very well against France. Ninety seconds remain in this match. Is that mountain is too big for the French? And what a final we're looking forward to. So New Zealand against Australia is very similar to what happened last year. Where of course Australia won that match by 35 to 27. 
Yeah, it's not an original lineup, Australia, New Zealand, in this World Women's World Series. They've been two such standout teams, but it's always a good show and never better than last year's Dubai final. If we get one as exciting as that again, I think everyone will be happy. Well, the New Zealand team have won 29 of their last 31 matches. In fact, they've won 16 consecutively. This will make it 17. So they certainly are on a roll. Broughton gets it, and she gets the player at the same time. Fanny Horta up very, very quickly. That's crazy. Gets it, and they move it wide again here. Scanlon, she's not afraid of going into contact. as the young girl, the young 26-year-old on at debut, but that tackle was high. New Zealand looking to try and finish with a wet sail. Pass there from Morrow, gets it wide, stepping once, twice, the third time is brought in. And they've got plenty of players here in New Zealand. Someone just needs to go straight, draw and pass. Here comes another try for the women in black. Ruby Tui, she sealed it. with those three steps usually we get four or five from her that's a small number of steps from Gail Broughton but it but it held the defense in and then they spun it wide and it was just the accuracy of the passing getting it to where the space was the defense having been drawn in Hazel Tubic out to Ruby Tui who's got a bit of gas on her and a nice little flourish of a dive at the end 22 year old from Canterbury who says that her biggest influence was Casey Robertson who I'm sure you locked horns with a few times too I did, yes. Casey Robinson, a very inspirational number eight in the 15s game. I'm not sure I've seen her very often on the sevens pitch. New Zealand have, can't say convincingly, beaten France here. Five tries to two, 31 points to 10. They will take on Australia in the cup final a little bit later on this afternoon evening here in Dubai.